Hey y'all, Moses here. This video is not going to be for everybody, uh, and it's going to be a bit of a departure from the usual topics that I cover in my videos. I want to talk about anxiety and dealing with anxiety in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Um, before I get started, I just want to mention that I am off script today. I'm not, I can't write a script for this topic. I'm just going to try and put some of my thoughts out there and how I personally deal with anxiety in, in some ways when it comes to video games and, and life in general. Uh, but with that in mind, I am not a medical professional. If you are dealing with anxiety um, in, in, the, in life or in games uh, and you think it's affecting you beyond the scope of, of a video game or Essentially, if it gets to a point where you don't think you can manage it, I really encourage you. I really encourage you to, to to seek out a professional to to help you talk about this stuff because I think that's really important. And the stigma around talking about that stuff should be um, eliminated from social discussion. There should be no stigma. You should always feel comfortable talking to someone. So, uh, with that said, let's jump right in. Um, I think, uh, at least based on some of the comments I've read, that. I scripted a joke into my into my most recent video uh, about house camping and I think that it sparked a bit of a discussion that made me regretful for some of the perceived humor around play styles and how people play the game. Um, so with that said, I, I, I'm not going to apologize for what I said because I don't think it was that uh, harmful of a comment. But um, I guess I was insensitive to the fact that my play style does not match up with, I would say, a huge amount of the, of the players that play this game. And... Um, house camping is is a viable strategy in a lot of different ways. It is not necessarily going to benefit some players in the long, in the long run, but if that's how you want to play the game, that's your choice. So I don't want to dive too deep down that rabbit hole regarding playstyle. So I want to talk about anxiety. To me, and this is my definition, not the professional definition, but to me, anxiety, at least as it relates to this game, is the fear of making the wrong decision that will ultimately end your round. So that might be engaging at the wrong time, leaving your cover at the wrong time, waiting too long to do something. All of these fears about losing the round combine to make this paralyzing kind of ang anxiety slash anger um, that that can just ruin your day. It, it, it sucks the fun out of the game. Ultimately, this game and any game is supposed to be fun and Maybe not necessarily relaxing, but it should be an expenditure of energy that leaves you feeling positive at the end. Now, in a competitive atmosphere like the one I build for myself, that's not always the case. I have bad days playing this game because I have an expectation of myself that is centered around my competitive nature. I'm a highly competitive person. I want to do as, as well as possible at all times. I always want to win, and that's just not realistic. So sometimes I lose and I get mad. I'm going to go through some of the things related to anxiety that has helped me deal with that feeling of anger and anxiety about performance. The first thing is has, has nothing to do with games at all. And this is just a general good tip for anyone in the world, I would think, if possible. And, and again, not being insensitive to those who cannot do this type of activity, but it's really important before or after um, playing a game of this kind that you get out and do something physical, even if that's taking a 15 or 20 minute walk around your neighborhood or walking up and down your apartment stairs or hitting the weights or playing a game of basketball or soccer or whatever it is that you're doing, do something physical. There's something about physical activity and I'm sure it's something to do with hormones or, or endorphins in your brain being released after physical activity, but it makes the game seem a little bit more clear. Um, it just helps with the general feeling of that that tightness that like okay yesterday was a bad day I, I lost a bunch of rounds I'm gonna get up first thing in the morning I'm gonna play some more put a break between those two things do something physical um, just go for a walk hit the weights again whatever whatever it is for you that it, that works um, just do something that gets the blood flowing and for me it really makes the game a lot easier to play after I do that um, the second thing is understanding the scope of expectation for this game what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to win every round? Are you trying to get better as a player? Are you trying to understand positioning better? Uh, this is going to translate into my next point, but just have an expectation for what you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to have fun with your friends? Are you trying to climb the leaderboard? Is that, re is that expectation realistic for your skill? And if it's not, what can you do to increase your skill? 
if you're trying to climb the leaderboard, you need to have good aim and you need to have good tactics. So you need to go out there and understand positioning. You need to maybe practice your aim in a game like CSGO. I, I use CSGO Deathmatch as a as an aim honing tool because you can get a lot of repetition, a lot of muscle memory built up. The games don't necessarily relate from a from a from a mechanic standpoint, but the mechanics of aiming are uniform across all FPS. Move cursor to head, shoot at head or body. Those two things are present in both Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Counter Strike. So I really recommend CS:GO as a at least CS:GO Deathmatch as a aim honing tool. Um, after that, um, as far as positioning, I've got lots of information about positioning. You can watch my live streams. Uh, if I talk a lot about my game-to-game decision-making regarding tactics, spe- specifically in duos and squads as well, if you're looking for that information. Uh, the third thing is while in the game. When it comes to anxiety and, and dealing with it, it is best to always have a vision of what you want to do next. And Now, this is very subjective to whoever's listening or playing uh, this video. Uh, or playing the game, I should say. But if you consider always having goals, so in the early game, your goal is to land, get looted, survive wherever you are, and then move into the mid game. If you can get through that, then you can start setting smaller goals. And the goals will get smaller and smaller as the game continues, but you must have them. So if you are looted and you're ready to get into the game, your next step should be where's the circle? How do I get there? How do I stay safe while getting there? Am I prepared for an engagement? If the answer is no, you're not prepared, there are two ways to go about that. You can continue to loot, in which case you should get a vehicle or, or, or start running to the next spot. Um, or you should start considering taking a fight because, again, taking loot off of an individual is a lot easier than trying to loot buildings because they have done that job for you already. So if your next goal is to get into a fight, then you need to shift your mindset to the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in a gunfight soon. How am I going to deal with that? And just knowing that you could, there's a 50-50 shot, maybe better, maybe worse, that you could die at the end of that and just come to terms with that your round might end. That's, that's a very real possibility. But you know what? There's going to be a round after that. And there's going to be a round after that. Every round should be, should be um, in its own box in your mind. And be able to deconstruct that box. Just look at it and say, this, this round is what, what went well, what, what didn't go well. Focus on what did go well. And then try and work on the things that didn't. Because um, it's, it's really important to just have a goal for yourself. And, um, and, and that, that, that's specifically from minute to minute in the game. Even if, you're, even if you play a passive play style and you don't want to get into a fight and you just want to continue through the round passively, then set movement goals for yourself. I'm in this house. I have to go here. How am I going to get there? What's the safest route? What are the variables in that route? That kind of, that kind of thinking really helps alleviate the, the fear of the unknown. And um, when it comes to improving or becoming a more efficient, aggressive player and incorporating anxiety into that as well. Um, I would consider that uh, you have you have to kind of look at the game as a uh, as a malleable and changing thing like I said in the beginning is that there is no way to um, there's no way to predict what's going to happen and and that's something that you should use as a propeller. Um, letting letting the fear of the unknown be a headwind is a lot less productive than it being a tailwind. So instead of letting anxiety paralyze you, let it propel you into uncomfortable situations. And maybe that's my my lack of experience coming out. But if you can if you can use the anxiety of I don't know where this guy is and he might shoot me. Well, guess what? The best way to find out is to maybe push that guy into exposing himself by being aggressive. And and that might not fit your play style again. But uh, that's that's something I use. I, Especially in the late game, if you if you have this situation where you know that the, within the circle there is an individual, and that might scare you, but that means you have a very good idea as to where they might be. So look around the map, understand where you would want to be, and assume that that's where they are. Move yourself in a way that you can stay aggressive and flexible, but you're also kind of using whatever natural cover might be available to you. It's it's one of those situations where anxiety is belt is, is is perhaps best dealt with by by planning and action because you want to minimize the amount of the amount of unknown. I think a lot of anxiety 
translates or comes from uh, or a fear of the unknown and the fear of, of mistake making. But if you have control over that, if you, if you take the choice into your own hands to push or to play passive and understand the risks and reward of both of those things, I think the anxiety around the result might diminish. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. And I hope what I'm, I've been saying makes sense. I don't want to go too long uh, in this kind of uh, this discussion just for just for your own time. But um, I suppose that this discussion is, is really specific. So I guess for, for players who are listening to this, where does your anxiety originate? If you if you even experience that or where does your where does your play style fit into how you feel about the game? Because maybe readjusting the way you look at your own playstyle may alleviate some of the issues you experience. If you are if you are fearful of being um, shot in the open, and because of that you are hiding in houses, or if you would rather always always be moving or have to be have to be aggressive, and your and your anxiety around losing gunfights makes you angry. Maybe maybe you maybe you need to readjust and and work on some of the fundamentals of movement before being aggressive. Uh, being a successful player is the culmination of all of your skill, whatever that might be. If you are a good uh, gunfighter, but you are bad at positioning, you know you you may be able to fight your way through the end of rounds in some situations. But if you're constantly taking fights and dying to the circle, you need to you need to understand that perhaps there is more to the game than just gunfighting and similarly with uh, with positioning if you're really good at positioning but you're very uncomfortable with gunfighting then perhaps you need to look beyond this particular game and get better at fps in general and that's something that only can happen with time so uh, i hope i i kind of uh, gave some clarity to my personal understanding of this game and maybe gave you something to think about when it comes to anxiety and this game um Again, I apologize for being off script, but uh, I just wanted to cover this topic and, and kind of start the discussion around dealing with anxiety and 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 just understanding that it will get better with experience and time and, and really eliminating the variables of unknown factors, um, I think will reduce anxiety. So I'm going to make a video about play styles in the future, and I, I just wanted to cover this topic really quickly and, and show you this gameplay. But uh, if you have questions about this stuff, jump into my live stream. Uh, twitch.tv slash WTF Moses and um, I, I hope that this uh, this video finds an audience it's not typically the video I would make but uh, I'm gonna put it out there and see what you guys think I'm interested to hear your comments and if you like the video uh, please hit the like button subscribe if you want uh, for more content uh, maybe not of this type in the future but of more pu more PUBG in the future uh, all my all my links are down below in the description um, I hope this finds an audience and I hope you guys find some merit in what I said. And if I was wrong on some things or, or maybe if, if I was if you if you have some something to add to the discussion, again, jump down in the comments and, and leave something below. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. And until next time, I'll see you out there. OK.